damn people making a play for our youngsters and our and our older generation. Hmm? What's going to be in 20 years time? Who's going to be left? People say, but what can I do? I'm just one person. Discovery, discovery changes lives. Is Torah true? We're going to take an intellectual approach to defending the fundamental beliefs of Judaism, that there is a God and he spoke at Sinai. The biggest breakthrough that we ever made yeah, was discovery. Teireh says, das ki Hashem hu alukim. You got to know. You got to see the evidence. You have to have it clarity. Okay, but people don't like to think. And they get overwhelmed. And they don't trust their thinking. Achim, this Israeli organization, made a seminar, which they did it with, with a way of presenting it from the back. I learned a lot from them, yeah? But what we most we learned was the seminar. We brought it to America and we did it Friday, Shabbos, and Sunday. And it was the most successful, powerful tool as we ever, you know? Until then, Kirov was man-to-man -man combat, you know? Bayonet, <laughs> right? You get the guy, right? With this seminar, it's like a machine gun. <laughs> you line them up, ching. It was fantastic. So we trained volunteers, which is much better, you see, because they're not professionals, that they are leery, you know. But a guy who's a Supreme Court uh, a lawyer, yeah? A guy who's a doctor, he's a, he's a doctor, he's a, an internist. Another fellow is a computer expert, another guy. And these guys are teaching. These guys are teaching, and they're doing the job. And it, it, it's friendly, it's, it's interesting, it's beautiful, but it gets across the power of taking the secret. The first class we're going to do is called The Seven Wonders of Jewish History. The, the type of document verification is outside verification. We're going to use history as an outside source of verification for the Torah. So to do that, we're going to first go back into history a little bit. You guys remember King Louis XIV of France? Not personally, I'm sure. Anybody? Yes, OK. Yeah, King Louis, he was called the Sun King, built Versailles. He's the one that said, Le'atamwa, I am the state. That's pretty serious uh, guy. So King Louis, although he was you know, on the surface a Christian king, he wasn't such a believer. He was what you might call today an agnostic. King Louis had an, an advisor who you might remember and perhaps even have nightmares about from math class. His name was Blaise Pascal. No. Oh. He said, oh, Pascal. Yeah, Pascal, now, great mathematician. But if you were to ask him, hey, Pascal, you're a mathematician? You go, moi? That's the limit of my French. Moi? I'm not a mathematician. I'm a Christian spiritualist philosopher. Most of his writings we have are not on mathematics. They're on philosophy, Christianity. He also happened to be a smart guy, so he did a few other things like, you know, mathematics and science on the side. So one day, Pascal, the advisor, and his king, King Louis, were having a conversation. And we have this conversation in the personal writings of both men, and they match 100%. And Pascal was trying to convince King Louis, hey, there really is a God. There really is such a thing as supernatural forces. But after a bit of a conversation, the king said, Pascal, stop. I'm tired. If you can't bring me one, just one piece of solid, demonstrable, rational evidence in the existence of some supernatural force in the universe, I'm not interested in continuing the conversation. So Pascal immediately answered, why the Jews, your majesty? The Jews. Discovery has been an unbelievable springboard for questions and answers, for people questioning their own commitment no matter what, I'm talking the best yeshivas and the best seminaries, to the point where people come over to me afterwards and be like, how come we don't know about this? How come we don't have classes like this in our schools? Now, of course, even if you're Orthodox, even if you're from, fam from community, is, it's an unbelievable springboard to talk about Hashkafa and Muna and Bitaham. 
if it's a semi-orthodox or on its way to being an orthodox community or if a rabbi wants to use it as outreach, then it's proven how valuable a tool can be. If we're gonna live our lives based on the Torah, on the document, then we want to make sure, before we get to the end of the line, that whoever it is that wrote that document is really in control. Because if not, we're going to live our lives and come to the end of the line and find out that it's all been a life of lies. We're going to see from the, the stories that Esau and Yaakov have three conflicts. And if the Ramban Nachmanides is correct, we're going to be looking for these three conflicts to play themselves out over the course of world Jewish history between the descendants of Esav, the Edomites, the descendants of Yaakov, the Israelites. Okay. I've always had, I've uh, been happy and, you know, a purpose to live, but now it's, you know, it's, it's, I have true meaning in my life that, you know, I can wake up every day and really know that, you know, that there is purpose in my life and that, you know, I, a, a meaning to go forth and to really live. I never realized how many people were searching for the truth and what the kind of an impact that a seminar like Discovery could have on people. When I first saw my first Discovery seminar, I was absolutely amazed. I, I, I was, it was mind-boggling to me that there were all these people who are searching for the truth and didn't know where to find it. And they found their way to discovery and all of a sudden their eyes were opened. It was like a person who was dying of thirst and suddenly gets a cold drink of water. Most times people say, but what can I do? I'm just one person. There's a Holocaust going on. I can't fight the Nazis. What am I going to do? There's a spiritual Holocaust going on. But what can I do? I'm just one person. But if you can bring discovery, then there is something you can do. And not just do it in a small way, there's something you can do in a big way. You can be part of a movement that can make a tremendous change in Yiddishkeit and the Jewish people. How could a person who cares about the Jewish people, who cares about making a Kiddush Hashem, pass up an opportunity like that? To me, it's beyond comprehension. What we have over here is the newspaper Mariv on the next day. The headline telling about what happened the day before. We can pick out the key words from this, namely, Mitkefet terror, terrorist attack, Matosim and Matos, airplanes, and Migdaleha Ta'omim, twin towers. These are the key words describing the event. What happened? A terrorist attack. Where? The twin towers. How? Airplanes. Here, Professor Elio Rips, in searching the entire Torah, found this in the Book of Numbers. Here we have Migdalei Hata'omim, Twin Towers, Mitkefet, Attack, and here, Matos, Airplane. Now, interestingly enough, Art Levitt found, right over here in the text itself, Pamayim, twice. It raises a question, but doesn't answer it. Is there a relationship between the codes and the text itself? Probability of that chart you just saw is 19,500 to 1. It was also peer-reviewed at the Pattern Recognition Conference by non-Jewish mathematicians that the experiment was done correctly and the probability calculated correctly. There are hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of Jews out there who have an Ashoma, a Heilige Ashoma within them. But the Heligan Shama is dormant, it's asleep. And you know, that's for many reasons. The main reason being that they've never they've never heard of the Torah, they've never heard of Hashem portrayed in the right way. Discovery as a Kirov tool is a rich program that leaves a person who's been through it with a clear view that the Torah is authentic and that they, they have to, it's, they cannot walk out of a discovery and say that was interesting and carry on their lives as if, you know, as if they haven't heard anything. And then zooming around the side of accuracy, specifically mentioning four creatures in the wonderful world of mammals that either chew their cud or have split hooves, but not both, 
And there's an interesting side point saying, that's it, no more. And today we haven't found a fifth species. And then making the outrageous statement that, by the way, in the wonderful world of water, anything that has scales will have fins. And that's why even today, going to a kosher fish store, they flay a fish like the meat cut away from the bone. There better be on that piece of meat, a little piece of skin with a bunch of scales. It's not an accident, because that's your proof it also had fins. How do they know? You know, whoever wrote this book obviously had access to information well outside of the realm of normal human information, what I would want to call insider information. Who's more of an insider than God himself? Today, the, the world we're in, we need to prove to people Torah exists and God wrote it in an intellectual way. And, and this is a great seminar and a, a great way to do it, in a very easy way. All the problems of the Jewish people can be traced to one thing, ignorance. Every single problem. You know, if, if the Jewish people do not understand what it means to be Jewish, it's a slippery slope from there downwards. And every single problem that the Jewish people are facing whether it's poverty in Israel, whether it's problems in the educational system in Israel, whether it's um, appeasement of the Palestinians, whether it's the fact that the vast majority of Jewish philanthropists in the United States of America give their tzedakah to non-Jewish organizations, intermarriage, that, that every single problem comes from a lack of understanding and therefore a lack of adherence to Torah. Torah is the blueprint for creation. The Jewish people are the messengers of how to communicate that blueprint to the world. If the Jewish people do not embrace Torah, the world is in a very, very serious situation. And all you have to do is look around the world, read the newspaper, and see how dangerous a world we live in, and the corruption and the immorality, to know that the world is very, very much in need of values. That is Torah, and that is the role of the Jewish people. So it's not just that Kiruv is important for every individual Jew, which it is critical in order to give them the type of fulfillment that they're seeking in life, but it's critical for the Jewish people because the Jewish people are made up of all the individual Jews that live in any particular generation, and the quality of the Jewish people and their ability to accomplish their purpose is dependent upon every individual Jew really taking their responsibility seriously but it's for the entire world, because we can't be or Lagoyim, we can't be a light into the nations and teach the world the values of Torah, which they also desperately need, unless the Jewish people embrace their responsibility as Am HaNivchar. So it's critical for every individual Jew, it's critical for the Jewish people, and it's critical for humanity.